Hello and welcome back to Deep Dish, where two filmmakers are talking about a movie, not a, movie, not but a, movies, a no, series. No. Um, we're talking about Netflix. Specifically, Three, three, body, body, problem. three body Problem. Three Body Problem. There we go. We're, that was a gonna, good intro. We're going to talk about Three Body Problem. <laughs> I'm Kenny. Uh, I'm D. And like I said, this is Deep Dish from Carmen well, Line Studios. Let's try that again. I'm D. He's Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Kenny. <laughs> Three Body Problem episode yeah. four. Call, I forgot what this. Our story. Lord. Right. The yeah. last one was about Destroyer of Worlds. Destroyer of Worlds. Yeah. We yeah. weren't keen on that one. No. We made oh. fun of that episode a lot. Yeah. There is something I want to go into into this though. Yeah. And that's that I like this episode so much more. Yeah. Than the last three. Me too. <laughs> Did this on my on my second watch through the series? I I kind of pinpointed this one as my favorite. Yeah. Episode. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I hope this isn't my favorite. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. It's good, though. I like There's it. other yeah. episodes I'd want to be better than yeah. this, but they're not. Sure. They're not. Sure. Yeah. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. Okay. We start with uh, Winjay and Evans, uh, young Winjay and Evans. Right. Are meeting. In 80s version. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I think they're in London. I think that's what Something. they said. Yeah. She's there for a conference. Yeah, astrophysics. Astrophysics, conference. you know. You know, the conference they yeah. have in astrophysics. So. Yeah. Uh, and she's meeting uh, Evans Yep. for dinner or for lunch. Yep. Something. Yep. And, uh, you know, they chit chat, they catch up, and then she's like, I inv- invited aliens to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, as you do in the casual conversation. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> that, was, that, and that, that was just kind of the cold open. <laughs> For the episode, I don't nothing particularly remarkable here. Uh, no, it, it's yeah. building a backstory between her and Evans, and yeah. I feel like it's really needed. Uh huh. And I don't feel like we get it really actually in, in this scene. Um, I know there's another scene later on. Yeah, but, but yeah, I still think we need more than that. I do too. Yeah. Um, in the book, don't no, mm-mm, not yet. No, hold, <laughs> just hold it, okay? Hold your in the books in the, nonsense. In the um in the book. Yeah, they. I feel like they are so fast and loose with their characters in this show. It's um, it's strange to see what they focus on versus what they don't focus on. I think that's the thing. Because when Jay feels like she should be the main character and she's not. Yeah. That's what's weird. And, yeah. It's almost like they are portraying the show the way uh, some of the characters are... Uh, unraveling the mystery right right so like as we get into the episode we we find out that the um most of the characters that are investigating this mystery believe that evans is the is the main guy right right, right. is yeah. the is the real mover behind right. it all there's a whole lab. and they're surprised when they find out it's win so that's you know? the whole thing with this is that they're trying to build a backstory to that reveal i guess is I, what it is i guess but we're we're sitting here from an, a, a space of omniscience where we're actually seeing the past right so it doesn't make sense to do that <laughs> yeah. anyway i don't know um but yeah we it, it, they could be much more interesting characters sure uh we go to our um, very short um, opening credit sequence. <laughs> that's a great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And and then uh, Will is waiting to get picked up. He's leaving voice messages for his buddy Jack because he don't know Jack dead. <laughs> he don't know Jack dead yet. He don't know. Damn. So Saul comes and. Uh, Tells him Jack dead. <laughs> what is this scene for, by the way? So, the, uh, he who's he waiting for? He's waiting for a ride. Will's waiting for a ride. Yeah, Jack home. was supposed to pick him up. Oh, Jack was. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, "Where are you? I've been out of you know. I've been discharged for a while now." Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then Saul comes and he's like, "What are you doing here?" Right. And then he does the face and he goes, "And then we what cut. happened? Then we cut. Yeah. To Jen crying, watching her. Th- yeah. Her friend so get this, murdered. <laughs> this scene seemed a bit." crazy to me they're like here watch the footage (laughs) we need you to come in and watch the footage of your friend getting his throat cut yeah and she's like no more no more and i'm like yeah why would why were you even watching the first place why is this the thing yeah i I didn't get that yeah um it's clear she was already crying when like when we cut to her and that's all we needed like uh, just to know that she was already sad she already knew that he died so she doesn't need to watch it i don't know why we have that footage i guess to show 
that other characters have now seen that girl who was allegedly there. Tatiana. Yeah. Uh, her name's never said in the her show. Her name's Tatiana? But, but that's what it is in the credits. In the credits? Yeah. Tatiana. Okay. So Tat, uh, Tatiana scrubs herself from the footage, or is somehow scrubbed from the footage, and we need Jen to know that. So I yeah. feel like that's what this is for. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it segues into them talking about sending Jen on a mission. To the summit. The yeah. summit. That she, re- that she got an invitation to. Yeah. Yeah. And she believes that they killed, well, they did kill Jack. So they being whoever it is that's in the summit. That, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do we know what that group is called? I'm just wondering. Well, their if ship's called the Judgment Day. Yeah. They, they have a logo. They have. <laughs> they do have a logo. They're the followers of the Santi. I don't know. They should have a name. They're so culty. You'd expect they have a they, name. They yeah. would have. They'd be like called like the family or something. <laughs> they should be called the family. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Oh, I know what they are. What's that? Monosolarians. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the monosolarians. The monosolarians. We only have one son. Oh man. For us, for an episode we liked a lot, it's pretty boring so far. <laughs> yeah, so we don't far, even yeah. have much to talk about. Not so much. Um, nothing even really interesting filmmaking wise. Not up yet. To no. This point. And now we get this scene where Augie and Jen are doing drugs and. Right. And, this is actually my favorite so far. And Augie's like, "Drink the vodka. Great. <laughs> Fuck these pills. <laughs> so I like swallow it. <laughs> that was good. I like Jen's uh, reaction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drink I actually it. thought she gave a very genuine, uh, good um, uh, face yeah. for swallowing vodka yeah. that wasn't oversold and had the right amount of delay. <laughs> as a heavy drinker, as a person who drinks a lot, a person of vodka. who drinks a lot of vodka, I can say <laughs> she. I thought that it was well done. I thought this was a really good moment, character moment between them because yes. it, it showed through visual storytelling that's probably what the voice Mariah connected with it mm-hmm. but like Jin is like reaching for pills and Aki's like stop it yeah, right yeah. here's here's you know drink this instead I just like the the interaction between the two characters it's actually a moment where Augie um, uh, makes sense as a character yeah like her, her performance and relevance to the scene all actually fit actually maybe actually, for the first time <laughs> right she's a good character for the first time thus she doesn't actually fit her <laughs> her actual the character of the rest of the show right yeah. it would make more sense if she was like don't you fucking drink, get yeah. those pills and she punches her or something yeah like that. there you go that's true <laughs> um or like been pissed that they kept playing the game after making a solemn oath that's right that's like you right. think she would be more pissed off <laughs> you would because think. they broke their promise to her and now someone's dead. Right. You know? Right. Actually, that's interesting. Yeah. But that, whatever. Whatever. Again, <laughs> Augie's threats don't mean anything. They don't. Yeah. yeah. No, she, yeah. They're empty. Um, yeah. But I really like the moment between her and Jen because it shows, like we've talked about before, dialogue should reveal character. This is a strong character moment between mm-hmm. them. And it, it not only shows how much Augie cares for Jin, but like the idea that they've been, you know, friends for so long that she can say, don't take the fucking pills, take, you know, drink vodka. Like a person who's trying to get another person to feel better wouldn't say drink vodka. <laughs> right. Unless so, you knew the person real well. Right. You knew what the pills do and you knew what the vodka does. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, I just love that part. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. No, it was a good scene. Yeah. Would have been good in lots of other shows and movies, too. It would have. I'm saying this is a good average. <laughs> this is what it should be. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Congratulations. We hit the minimum. <laughs> yes. You pass. You pass. Passing grade. Uh, God. Strong B. The Game of Thrones. It might become something else we have to ban ourselves from talking about on this show. Like the book, you know? Like the book. Like, stop talking about the book. Stop talking about Game of Thrones. I don't know if I can. But, uh... Burn up Game of Thrones. It was this is so our good. show, man. This is our show. Oh, right. Yeah. No yeah. one can stop us. Exactly. All right, I'll say whatever I want. That's right. Okay. Except the commenters might. Oh, right. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Anyway, Game of Thrones <laughs> uh, was so good at character development. Yeah, 100%. So freaking good yeah. at, at these really subtle and intimate scenes that just built the character and yeah. they they're missing so in this show i wonder so bad i feel like they were 
they're taking too much of the book and trying to shove it into a smaller form yeah and thus have condensed a lot of things into expository stuff and left almost no room for character development yeah. Yeah. except for the moments that they just made up scenes like this moment between Augie and Jin and it feels a lot more uh, genuine because of that because it is written from them and it feels like it's just a them moment because this doesn't happen in the book right there's yeah no, there's no Augie and Jen crying over a dead friend it's and it's nice it's just nice that it feels genuine to me I wonder if they would have been more successful with this show if they went the Dune route where Denis turned one book into two movies. Yeah. Oh, one book into two series, maybe. Yeah, two maybe season one and two cover yeah. it's, the one book. It's funny because they taught, from what I've heard, season three of the, or not season three, book three of this trilogy is supposed to be two seasons later on. Mm. And that they, like, apparently, like, saying we're gonna have to make two seasons mm -hmm. i don't know if that's exactly what they say but I, that's the feeling i got and it makes it seem as if they don't want to but they're going to okay okay <laughs> yeah so i don't know um, yeah well they were pretty beholden to sticking with a series of books with game of thrones so maybe that's just how they're programmed now maybe but you're right it seemed like the book just had too much for what is it eight episodes no yeah 100 to percent too much yeah and and even so, like uh, I'm now finishing the book, and the the book, the book just has so much detail, which is to be expected of a you know this kind of science fiction book has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, of the stuff that's happening, there's a lot of stuff that's happening. But as far as the characters involved, there's not a whole lot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. And yet, at the same time, we still end up with scenes that seem completely unnecessary fuff yeah the, yeah know. no it's weird and i, I want to say some of that might have to do with acting maybe uh or maybe it's directing maybe not so much acting but like uh we talked about like the the scene the extra scene that clarence had with the smoking oh actually there's even a scene in here with clarence and his son mm -hmm. um that are just good scenes it was a good scene yeah. we'll get to that let's move on yeah all right um so the next scene is Clarence and Wade are on a rooftop overlooking the city like you do. The Batman, um, <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. What was it? I don't remember this part. They're, they're standing on the rooftop and they're just talking about, oh, this is when Clarence reveals the judgment day. They're like, we found him. Uh, we found him. Here's yeah, the yeah. ship. What do you want us to do? Right. Kind of yeah, I love the photo of Evans just looking up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like looking at the, <laughs> at the satellite. The satellite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, huh? He can Dang. see satellites. <laughs> you caught me. You caught me. Oh, man. <laughs> um, but then we finally go to the Judgment Day. Uh, uh, so we're on the ship. Um, oh, yeah. We see Evans talking to everyone. Oh, this is a weird opening scene, I thought. It makes sense. Uh-huh. It makes it's. I want to say it's amateur, this scene. Which bit? Uh, but, so Walking down the hallway? Walking down the hallway, yeah. yeah speaking in different languages yes. saying hi to just to like what is the best way to show that evans can speak every language and people love him yeah well that and possibly because uh there's so many different types of followers in this group mm -hmm. in the family <laughs> yeah it also uh gets across pretty quick that that this is very much culty like this is the right. first time that you get that oh this is like a, a cult. This is a cult. Yeah, that's, yeah. it's the first time. Like the little girl's like, "Will I live to see the Lord?" Right, right. He says "Hola" to a um, Some Spanish dude. speaking dude, yeah. and then uh, speaks French to oh, the little girl. That's what it was. Uh, freaking! I don't believe I don't believe his character right now. Um, I love this guy. The he's actor, he's a great actor. He's awesome. And Jonathan he, Pierce or Price. Yeah, I think he's almost. I feel like he's almost playing the same guy as he was in Game of Thrones. Uh, he's yeah. kind of kind of this leader. Yeah. Uh, but in here, yeah, he's a cult leader again. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he plays the cult leader really well, but when I see him talking, I don't see Evans. I see that actor playing the cult leader Yeah, and I just see, see cult leader. I don't see the guy that when Jay met in China, who was trying to save birds. That's true. Yeah. The disconnect between those two young young Evans and old Evans yeah. is, is really wide. It's really They're wide. Yeah. Just 
different. And he was there for Vera's funeral. Yeah. So it's not like they couldn't have done, you know, their their work. There. Yeah. Well, when you when we see older Win Jay, yeah. She a hundred percent vibes with young Win Jay. One hundred percent. Like like I don't it's like the same character it at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, old Evans does not feel like young Evans whatsoever. It Doesn't, feels like cult leader versus guy who was interested in environmentalism. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have that crossing. And yeah. the reason why I think is because there's not a whole lot of intermediary scenes, right? Because we don't get to grow with Evans. Yeah. We grow with Winjay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, amateur. Amateur. And then uh, he talks to his recruiter guy. Who basically says uh, uh, Rooney's out? He didn't work out, right? And goes, hmm, okay. Yeah. And then uh, he asks if they should up the security for the event, and he says, "Why would we need to do that?" I just now realized that's a callback. We've back. got yeah. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord will. What, what, what's he say about how? What can we do that the Lord can or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, very again very heavy cult vibes that's what we're doing these guys completely believe in the the complete control over everything by yeah. the santi yeah and it's kind of weird because at this moment in the story thus far the four episodes in i don't think we've understood first we're still trying to question whether or not the santi are real right yeah and i i think that's probably the the point here. I want to say that's the point from the filmmakers, from the showrunners, that they're saying we don't really know if they're real yet. However, uh, that's going to play into your empathy with these people, right? Yeah. You're not really sure if they're real. They're not really sure if they're real, but they're going to go on faith. Yeah. But that's not what's happening, no. right? <laughs> yeah. I think they've they've definitely experienced things to show them that the Santi have extreme influence and can basically control things. They can control things. Yeah. Like there's literal evidence yeah. that they exist and they are here and can interfere. Yeah. But we don't know that. Right. And so thus the cult looks like it's just a fucking cult. And I wish there was more empathy there because that's a far more interesting story to, uh, there's a, there's a line later on. I'm going to jump ahead just a sec. Uh, Tatiana says our Lord is real to yeah. to what's to Jay. right right and i love that i love that too and then yeah. that, again missed opportunity because yeah. that would have been would have been really cool to watch a cult function or grow and develop uh that is based on things they're experiencing really happening exactly yeah right which is which is really cool to play again into empathy with the audience to make them feel good on both sides right and you know yeah. you're not in this space of like oh they're um they're the bad guys. Crazy religious right. zealots. Right. You know? No, they are like, like you would join them <laughs> right. if you saw the things they're seeing. <laughs> right. Uh, they're like literally uh, the bridge to the real aliens. They're, it's not Santa, like they say. Yeah, exactly. You know? And they're trying to, they're trying to get, like their whole point of being together and inviting the, the Santi is the idea of inviting peace to the world. And that's really interesting. But uh, yeah. yeah, again, I wish, yeah, I just wish they were introduced differently. Yeah. They could have been the good guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Anyways, he goes into his little office and to chat with uh, the Lord. Best scene. Not yet. This is the second. That's uh, the best scene. scene. Okay, fine. <laughs> but uh, the Lord tells uh, him that they know, the bad guys know, your enemies. Oh, this isn't the best scene. Yeah. And and then she's the the lord says uh uh don't worry no one's gonna hurt you it's nice to see you smile. i can take care of this and then oh it's good to see a smile on your face meaning like meaning they understand they can even emotion. tell that you're smiling <laughs> like i can see you right now not only can i see you but they understand what that means and yeah he's happy and yeah that's yeah it's strange to me that the, there's some dialogue choices in here that they show that the santi have intelligence of what humans are but also don't that's time. true yeah. interesting there's wow. an inconsistency there that i'm i'm not loving all right so then we have this uh, kind of like really endearing and cute scene with clarence and his son i love this scene it's yeah. a great scene yeah and again it could, have, it could have come out of a short film yeah that had nothing to do with uh this show <laughs> with the show at, at all, all. 
I don't think it moved the story whatsoever. No, it revealed completely just character, and that was it. Yeah. Not not expository, by the way. If people listening to this, friggin', there's, there's, uh, we talked about three different types of dialogue. This is not expository, right? right. This is just character, and it's right. really nice to see uh, Clarence, someone... Uh, it's so weird, actually, that we even have this scene because Clarence doesn't need character. That's development. what I was thinking too. It's right. like, it, I mean, I guess it told me a few new things about Clarence, yeah. but I mean, it, it makes did a, a it more. did a thing well that didn't actually need to be done, right? As what I think, and yeah. it's kind of interesting, yeah, because it makes him much more complex now, um, and he didn't need to be, and yeah. he probably doesn't need to be later on because I don't think he even plays a bigger role mm -hmm. later on. But I like this moment with the son because not only is the son a great actor also but I, I believe everything that's happening here it's an excellent scene yeah. i love the son being like i'm an entrepreneur dad <laughs> right you know yeah and uh playing mortal Kombat. i feel like that's a. Uh, I want to say that's something happening there whoops yeah i, I, I want to say that there's something happening with the the idea that it's playing mortal mortal Kombat. maybe i'm just reading too much into it maybe sometimes a game is just a game or close-up is just a close-up like we Maybe. learned with purple moon <laughs> i liked um uh the dialogue the the son's dialogue felt very much like he was raised by this guy yeah all right because yeah, i'm like yeah. oh they talk very similar in the and are like very sharp yeah in the way yeah they're they both very sharp things yeah they, they, it, it felt like a uh almost like a who's the dude that wrote uh, molly's game it feels like him. I want to say Aaron something. Sorkin. Sor Aaron Sorkin. And I thought it, I didn't even finish looking it up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Aaron Sorkin. It feels like that kind of uh, yeah. back and forth Could because be the they're both sharp. West Wing or something. Yeah. yeah, and I don't. I I do like. I know. So I don't. I love that they put in this tidbit about him having a boyfriend and for and they didn't focus on it like i feel like a lot of filmmakers do they go, where they're like oh my god he's, he's gay he's gay it's a wedge in between him and his father right the right fact that he's queer and it's just and it wasn't it wasn't yeah. even yeah it was just it was not nah, but i love the bit that he's like he's like well it means you have shitty taste in men <laughs> like, like my mom I guess i got it from my mother <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm like damn yeah yeah it was a clap back <laughs> yeah they're good and he's like, I'm going to buy you a million dollar pad someday. And he's like, well, you got to defeat the heart stealer first. <laughs> the heart snatcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that was good. good. It was good a good scene. And maybe utterly unimportant. Yeah. It does not have to do with the plot whatsoever. Yeah. I wish it was that way with the plot ones, with the ones that mattered. You know, uh -huh. that'd be cool. It would be nice. If they could actually make good <laughs> It would be scenes. nice. It would be nice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then we have this scene where Will and Saul go to Jack's, and this was kind of, kind of the same sort of thing. It was. I felt like I don't there's, like there's the almost same. a lot of downtime in this episode. Yeah, it's weird that, like I said, I like this one the most. Uh huh. Because yeah, we'll get to why. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. We get to why. We honestly, we like a couple scenes a lot. Well, the not just <laughs> uh, obviously. There's a couple scenes a lot, but I mean the whole scene, the whole. Sh episode in its yeah. entirety feels more genuine well i have a theory as to why that might be do you have a theory yeah the director of this episode is a person who is kind of the heart and soul of one of the most heart and soul brands in existence that being pixar andrew the, the, stanton who is andrew stanton directed this episode really who created Monsters Inc. Wow. and Bugs Life and Wally -E and Up. Okay. And, all right. <laughs> Did he direct any of the other episodes? Uh, I think he has one other, but this was the one, the first one in the show that he directed. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. This feels way more personal than the yes, other ones. And that makes so much sense coming from him. Yeah. You know, totally. That's funny. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I thought I, I, the name popped out of me on the screen like, I was like, what? <laughs> Andrew Stanton. <laughs> oh, that's odd. That's interesting. You know? Yeah. That's really um, cool. Which, yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. cool. It's weird. It, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense, but it's interesting. Yeah. 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 He also is famous for directing animation, which is right. also very different. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah. In this scene, by the way, um, the one where they're going through Jack's stuff and whatnot, uh, I don't like it. 
Yeah, yeah. I it, it it just feels like another fluff. I feel I think this all goes back to the problem we brought up in the first episode of these characters, this team of friends was made by breaking up basically one or two characters from the book. Right. So you have nothing several. Yeah. Right? So they're thin, they're all a little thin. Yeah. But you also then have a responsibility to make sure they all have a right amount of screen time. <laughs> like, like you feel like you have to oh check in. Jeez. What's Saul and Will doing? We better right. find out. You know, Jack died, so they have to have something. Something to do. To show them, right. you know, dealing with this. Yeah. We can't just move on with their story. Yeah. And so this is thrown in there for that See, purpose. There, there's a lot of, there's moments in here. Oh, I'm so glad we get to talk about this. Uh this, there was a lot of moments that I've seen in other shows like The Walking Dead where they would cut to like a person just having a conversation with another person, right? And that's all it was. And what I've seen a lot of like online commenters or, or Reddit or other people talk about is that they would say that these scenes are meant for character development and thus are good for that reason. And I don't like that you have to, you have to say that this like... This scene is meant for character development. It's not supposed to make you feel engaged and whatnot. I'm like, okay, that's bullshit. You should still be engaged with the character <laughs> should, development. Yeah. yeah, you should. The The idea here, I think, is is that you should be invested in the characters themselves. And if you're not invested, then there's a problem, right? Yeah. And that if you're having a scene like this, where, like, for example, right now what we're doing with this scene is that we're making Jack's character more complex, Right. The idea that we have Saul go to uh, go to the wall and take off it. He's like, oh, this this one, this one has the sex toys in it, right? Yeah. And he goes to open it, and it's just full of memoirs. And you're just like, oh wow, what a neat little moment that we have of Jack's character who's now dead, and we don't care about him anymore. Yeah. I, I just don't understand why this is in here. Yeah, and um, uh, I actually I actually think what they were shooting for was building more empathy with uh will with will uh-huh why how how was will well will it? has kind of the more emotional response to seeing the objects in the box and yeah. you're, you're supposed to feel his loss of jack i mean i think it would i think they've been selling to us that jack and will are the two really like close the, ones the besties yeah saul and augie and jen yeah they're doing like the whole friends thing kind of thing <laughs> um but what what was the what's the little action figure that he holds up? I think he's a soccer player. But is have we seen him before? No, but they really focus on it like it mattered, <laughs> like it was a callback or something. So it's not a callback. I did the same thing too. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's some. Uh, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so that's not anything. I don't think so. Wow, I don't think so. And if it is, then I certainly don't remember it. Yeah, but damn, it's so profound <laughs> that here here's this guy with all this affluence. And all around him, he puts like movie and comic book stuff, but the really important stuff is hidden away in a lunchbox. But thus making him. What does it mean? <laughs> no, it makes him more complex, yeah. though. That's yeah, the whole thing. I know. Well, so who. I don't know. It's dumb. It's dumb. I don't think they understand what they're doing. <laughs> 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 That's how I feel about Dan and Dave. <laughs> Dan and Dave don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't know. That's a good. That's a good clip, right? Because because I feel like they just just like all, all all they did was say, "Oh yeah, we need a scene to show Saul and Will uh, uh, deal with their grief." Yeah. Put this in. Make one. Yeah. And they make one, and they're like, "Oh well, you ended up making a scene that makes Jack more complex, as if we're as if that's important as to if the story, it's, right? Right? We have to unravel a mystery of Jack's past now. Yeah. To solve, but no, that's not it. Um, but How, they just don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, they could have. They should have had Saul and Will doing drugs and I, drinking like uh, the other scene. It, they should have been. Uh, yeah, that functioned at least in showing them dealing with the. Or, or showed that maybe Jack had an invitation, you know, to this summit thing and it was hidden away somewhere or something, you know. Or maybe he was hiding information of his own calculations about the whole Trisolarian thing. I don't know. I don't know. Turns out it doesn't matter. You oh. could you could actually skip this scene and it wouldn't affect your experience of the show at all. Yeah. Well, it definitely wouldn't affect the story whatsoever. Yeah. Skip scene. 
Skip it's scene. a skip scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm like trying to pull shit out of some of these scenes. No. Yeah. For the yeah. purpose of having something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Dear God. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Um, oof. Oof. Uh, Jen has a meeting with Wade and Clarence to discuss the mission. The mission? Yes, her being sent in. Oh, right, to the summit. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, he's like, don't worry, you'll be perfectly safe. Um, And then Clarence is like, but pack a bag in case you can't go back to your house afterwards. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I do, yeah, this scene is actually pretty cool. I I like, it's, it's kind of forgettable. Uh, because there's not a whole lot happening here, uh, character-wise, but but it's very direct and it tells us exactly what's going on and the scene and what we're going to do next, and so that, that's nice. Um, I do want to say I, I want to take this moment to say that we're trying not to pull too much from the book because in because in the show it should be able to stand by itself and be its own visual story its own thing that stands on the script without yes. having to do with the book whatsoever. Ideally. Yeah. So that being said, this whole scene reminded me of a scene that's in the book that's much more detailed, much more interesting and stuff. Uh, but I just want to say that to the viewers or listeners that we're not talking about the book. <laughs> Let's talk about how we're not going to talk about the book. I just I, I just want to bring that up in, in case there is the idea that, well, because in the book, this is what you should know, prerequisites to the show. And it's like, no, that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to read the book to get the show is the thing. Yep. That's all. That's all I'm trying to say. Fuck. <laughs> okay. There was a fun line that came out of this uh, scene. My kind of my, uh, like, it was a good moment. I like this moment. What was that like? That was when uh, Wade says something about like, oh. you don't have to believe in Santa Claus to know that there's presents or yeah, something. I love that. And yeah. she's like, do you believe in Santa Claus? Yeah. And Clarence is like, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that, was, that was stupid. Oh, that I was the that. stupidest line. I loved him saying that. Ho, ho, ho. That was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there, was two, there was two really good lines before that, like you said. <laughs> and, then, and then a very cliche <laughs> cut to black moment. <laughs> right. I like, the, I like the parallels here. You don't have to believe in Santa Claus to give presents is the idea that the cult can do damage without the Santi being real. Right. And, yeah, yeah. But Jen is still on the on the edge saying, well, I still want to know what, you know, if they're real, basically. And then we have, yeah, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and then we have a scene where Jen is driving to the summit. Yep. And I think this scene only exists to show that Wade can control traffic lights. That, that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he can control traffic lights. I think he can just observe what's happening. <laughs> He's like, green light. Green light. And she's oh. like, oh. Yeah. He can see everything. Yeah. No, yeah. that was, this was uh, unnecessary. Yep. Skip scene. Yeah. <laughs> Skip scene. I wonder how much. Uh, if we only talked about <laughs> the scenes that mattered, our episode would be really short. Oh, yeah. 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 Ten minutes long. Yeah. But that's part of what we're talking about is that these fools, <laughs> these fools have fools. the problem of having too much good content to put in a show. Yeah. And then they put a bunch of bad content that's unnecessary in the show. In between it. Yeah. What it, the heck? <laughs> They have good content that's in between also, but it's yeah. it's stuff that's not necessary. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even some of it's good, but it's... Unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. It's like they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, These big-ass showrunners who've got a, uh, a business deal with Netflix mm-hmm. and a show that's very popular. A fuck ton of money. They have, they have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> they're very famous. <laughs> Had one of the greatest shows of all time. Yep. Ruined it, too. Uh, oof. Because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm actually standing by this theory. I'm standing by it. Yeah? Yeah. Because when they were uh, at the top of their game and everyone thought they were the shit, they were following a guidebook. That's true. They had, That's true. They had like one of the most filmable books yeah. handed to them and the writer of the book's working with them right 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 and this in this apparently this book three body problem is famously not filmable not filmable yes right that's like its reputation right and uh but 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 when jay when george r martin disappears from the equation yeah for the last three seasons of game of thrones yeah and then it's on their shoulders to come up with this stuff all of a sudden 
it's a fucking disaster, <laughs> right? You know? Yeah. So it's like, where's the evidence that these guys can do this kind of thing? Yeah. Without being spoon fed every little piece of the well, series. I think yeah. I think now we know that they can't, and that's what's weird about going more with the series because i really love the story here both of us do right yeah, yeah it's an awesome ip yeah the ip is amazing but and and seeing it and just in a show that everyone can watch at any time is really dope but yeah they're not doing it justice <laughs> and, and there's just there's so much more interesting content here that they're not pulling from um one thing i i wonder if the chinese show is interesting i know i kind of want to see it yeah to compare how how long ago was that made do you remember uh, no i don't know this says it's a 2023 show it is it was that recent huh it's from 2023 oh so maybe they couldn't watch it while they were developing their own show oh no maybe it wasn't out yet oh no because i'm just like if someone had already done it well just in another language right and they still couldn't do an adequate adaptation dude they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Dude. You know what's weird is that this one is rated 7.6 on IMDb. And so is the so is the US one. 7.6? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now yeah. it's time for my favorite scene. Uh, we're, we're back on the judgment day. Yeah. Everyone's favorite scene. Uh -huh. Everyone's favorite scene. This is, a, this is everyone's favorite scene. <laughs> uh, Evans is reading Little Red Riding Hood to... <coughs> the lord and the lord doesn't understand you know yeah uh i i just love how hard it is to put yourself into the perspective of the santi in this point right where they're like i don't understand why is she talking to the wolf if the wolf wishes to eat yeah. her yeah she doesn't want to be eaten right and you're like what what <laughs> uh yeah drama is not something that exists on their planet so, so the idea of fear well and, also they share all their intentions with each other right there's no right. there's no hiding or lying right and so if you're there if if you're there in front of the wolf and you, the you wolf know. wants to eat you oh, yeah then you know the wolf wants to eat you and <laughs> right. You don't want to be eaten, right. so why would you be talking to the wolf? You yeah. Know? So it's a, it's a contradictory set of events. Yeah, I guess. So this this bit of this whole dialogue the two of them have is just like packed with like deep stuff. <laughs> yeah. Where like I, I could talk about this sequence for a long oh, it's time. A great, yeah, it's great. Just on the content. Yeah. But the performance. Yeah. Is performance is so good. Is really good. That also being said, I again don't believe this is Evans, but. You but know, the, you don't believe it's the young Evans. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. But old cult, cult leader, leader Evans, yeah. <laughs> this is a... It's tremendous. Amazing performance. It's tremendous, yeah. It's a great scene. Yeah, I love what, what, I, what I feel like is taken away here from the way that it's written is that we have we have them talking about lies that are being said within the story. Yeah. and But then it's not about that, but about the bigger picture about why are you telling me this lie about lies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so interesting. And it, it's such a foreign idea to these aliens that as soon as they learn that that is even a thing, right. they pull the plug without a second. Yeah, they immediately. Like, yeah. They've been investing in this, in this project for like decades now, and they're like, they do what? Oh, we're done. <laughs> right. We're done. Right. There's no, yeah, there's no empathy yeah. at all. It's just, it's, oh, okay, well, you can lie. We don't work with we you. We don't work with you anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about the book for a second. Is this scene verbatim? Does this come from the book? Do they learn? This is not at all in the book. So they can, they manufactured this yeah. to show that somehow the Santi learn that we can deceive people. So, so this is actually super cool <laughs> the fact that we're talking about this uh this scene is not in the book uh -huh. obviously but it's also the santi don't work this way whatsoever in the book there, there's not a radio that they're chatting through no, not only is there no radio the santi themselves don't have this whole experiential type of thing where they, they when you see the santi for the first time there um because there's a scene that takes place on the trisolaran planet um you see, <laughs> their whole way of living is almost exactly like ours and 
that they they look different but they, we don't know what they look like so they just kind of make shit up but it's like they're the way that <laughs> The way that they show them is by showing a person who's mirroring exactly what Win Jay did at the radio tower. Win Jay is a very human person who goes to uh, um, communicate with these aliens who told her not to answer, and she's just gonna say, "You know what? Fuck the fuck humanity because we need this, right?" And she answers and says, "Please, you know, communicate with us. We're gonna make this happen." I immediately on the other side of things, also. The Santi, who's known as the listener 139 or something like that, that listener hears when Jay's response or, or not her, her first thing, the first thing that comes mm -hmm. out is the, the humans that, that are trying to contact others. And he has a moment of sympathy and says, oh, they shouldn't be doing this, right? The uh, Earth doesn't know that there's monster people out here, uh, just like our planet. You know, our planet will come and conquer yours, so I better warn them, right? So he's already lying immediately. They already, he already knows. He has an individual experience. He has one that's indistinguishable from another human. And the entire last two chapters of the book is the, how the society functions in this hyper uh, authoritarian state where all the, all the people here are being uh, dehydrated uh, and, and burned if, they're, if they don't have a job. That's the whole idea here is that communism at the, at the like, height of authoritarianism. Okay. Yeah. So this is not <laughs> at all how they are in the book right so that's interesting yeah. all right so they just needed to come up with a creative cute way to show that they don't li they don't believe in they they had don't have the ability to lie i guess yeah but even though like because the book they they lie and that's and that's the whole point is that the the person the listener who heard this and tried to hide this information from their government the government saw them and said, you're going to be put to death. Actually, death is not good enough for you. We're going to hold you in, in punishment and see. You're, we want to make you see that the earth is going to be crushed. We're going to try to go crush them. Yeah. It's it's just it's just China versus China at this point. It's interesting. Yeah. it's it's It was a bit of a letdown, actually, when I was reading the book, because this moment in the show is actually much more interesting. I like the yeah. idea that... that Aliens are so different from our thinking methods, yeah. but this one is 100% mirroring. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Well, <laughs> let's talk about the show. <laughs> okay. Let's just talk about the show. Then. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love the lighting in the scene. I love the cinematography also. Um, a lot of the cinematography and the other sh shots, uh, the other scenes in the show feel kind of generic. Yeah. Uh, if, if beautiful, they are beautiful. Yeah. A lot of these things are really well shot, but I don't think there's a lot of intent between each of the shots. Yeah. Sometimes there is, sometimes they're not. This one is really cool because it's such a small scale setup where it's just one room, one light, one guy. And the subject that he's talking to is a mobile, is a mobile. So it's just really nice that you can have this really focused close ups on both people. Mm -hmm. They have this amazing shot at the, at the end where he, uh, he does, he's like, my Lord, are you still there? My Lord. Right. And it has the, the shot that's coming around from the 180. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, I just love that so much because it's, it's, it's giving visual tension yeah. to the scene. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, the pacing too. Yeah. Uh, the, the amount of, uh, pause and silence yeah. coming from the radio. And the pauses feels like they're incredibly long. Yeah. Uh, when they're not, I'm sure it just feels that way. Yeah. But the thing is we're, we're interested like you'll notice we're talking about these characters right now, you know, not like we have been with Jin and mm -hmm. Monkey and all them. Mm -hmm. And it's because we're interested in what's going to happen. <laughs> right. This was a scene that had stakes. This is, yeah. And we get to see the stakes pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the plot here. Right. Yeah. Almost for the first time in this episode, we <laughs> to really touch into the plot. Yeah. 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 God damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But when they get it right, they get it right. It's nice. Like, like, like they did just make this up. Uh, I don't know if the dude, you know, helped or whatever, whoever helped. But this is just a made up scene. But it's really good because it's small scale. It's focused and it's going forward. And I like that. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, the the just the visuals of the scene reminded me of uh, Guillermo del Toro. Interesting. Uh, shape of water in particular really yeah from the aesthetics maybe yeah 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 i like that 
Um, yeah, I literally was trying to, I was staring at the, his desk lamp, desk lamp yeah. the whole time, trying to figure out what kind of bulbs they were putting in there because, because it's massively bright. Uh, I love that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, stands out. Looks very different from the rest of the show. Yeah, that's great. Uh, um, okay, so we move to um, Jen, I believe. Yeah, Jen is, uh, gets through, goes through security, basically. Pulls up this place right. in the middle of nowhere. Uh, a couple of like Matrix looking folks <laughs> meet her. It's, it's a switch. Yeah. Is who comes yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, they look very Matrix. Yeah. Um, yeah. She does the red Very like, scan kind of like it. goth cyberpunk. That is what it feels vibe. like. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, funny because the summit is, isn't that way at all. No, no. <laughs> when I saw them, I thought, "Oh, dude, the summit's going to have like techno music playing." <laughs> you know? Yeah. Not at all. But, <laughs> Not at all. Um, yeah. Uh, so you know, they do their security check, and she checks out, and so they take her into another car, and of course, there's a. Uh, we get one shot to reveal that Wade is watching from like satellite surveillance, right? And that's uh, that was cool. I really like that. That had a very person of interest type of feel. And then another shot to reveal that Clarence is everywhere. Right. He's just there. <laughs> yeah. For everything that's happening, Clarence is always in his he, car. He's always physically and I'm just really like, close to her. You're yeah. freaking in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Like, where? how'd you even get here, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's there. He's watching. He's there when Jack dies. He's there when he's just the always, gets he's in the helicopter. Yeah. He's a sofon. He is. Yeah. That's going to be a big reveal. That'll be a big reveal. Ho, ho, ho. All right. <laughs> the summit looks like uh, where it, it looks like a product announcement from Apple. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like uh, Steve Jobs is going to come out right. and announce the new iPhone. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, I thought it was neat that they had the three body problem showing on like, like as graphics mm -hmm. everywhere but i i mean that's what it, it feels like decoration is that what it is it's branding to themselves the, yeah again self-referential branding again with the icon right yeah the icon of the three body yeah okay m maybe that's what we're talking about here then what when, when we talked about the vr stuff before we were thinking oh these are the aliens that made their own thing shit actually i don't remember now hold on this is weird does <laughs> Does the show does the show say that the aliens made the VR? Not not just the tech, but the whole story. They never say that it was physically made by them. Okay, but they do say because they say we took some liberties. Yeah. When they when Tatiana said that, uh, yeah, they made the program. And when the guy's reporting to Evans, he says, uh, "Oh no!" When Evans is talking to the Lord, yeah, says like, "Oh, we've recruited some more through the game." Okay, so that's what it. Is. Okay, so they do have so that icon, the three body icon, mm -hmm. is for their company then, or they're not? I, yeah, I assume cult, so. I, guess. I doubt the uh, Santi have a logo. Right, that's what makes yeah, because <laughs> we because we talked about that in the first episode. I think talked about why the fuck does the game have a logo if it's made by the aliens? But yeah, yeah, that makes sense now. Okay, yeah. It's just, it's the technology jump that made it really strange. Yeah. But they could send the tech in a Sofon. I suppose. <laughs> Sofon answered to everything. <laughs> you just talk us through it. Is that what it was? Just uh, connect this part to this part. And yeah. Just, and then yeah. go, go discover these elements and you're good. <laughs> yes. Discover these elements. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's, she's there at the uh, Apple store and uh an mc gets up to say everyone are oh no no first he talks to tatiana yeah tatiana talks to right her. tatiana and she does the clarification kind of thing yeah where she's like i know it seems like we're religious zealots but we're cool yeah because our lord is real and i was like fuck <laughs> that's actually pretty heavy <laughs> yeah that is really heavy <clears throat> um Again, it would have been nice to see the evidence of that. It would have been, yeah. I would have liked to have been on their side and experienced some empathy for a little bit, yeah. Yeah. It would have been, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just seem like evil bad guys. They 100% seem like evil bad guys, and I yeah. hate that. In fact, um, damn, God fucking... <laughs> when, uh, God fucking... <laughs> it's, so in, a, in the next scene, they, they announce their founder is here, 
and and all the people listening in are like, oh, it's Evans. We got to get ready. Right. Eyes on Evans. <coughs> and then they're like, Dr. Win Jin, whatever her full name was. Yeah. Ye Win Jin. Uh, the, so the first thing that bothered me was that this moment is is played out like a huge reveal. Like right. a like a neck breaking shocking twist. Right. <laughs> and I don't feel like they had hidden that from the uh, from the audience. Yeah. That Dr. old Dr. Ye and young Dr. Ye were the same person had already become clear to me before this moment. Yeah. And yet the scene looked like it's meant to be like, "Oh fuck." Right. But it was only that for the characters in the show. It kind of. Yeah, I when you think about it, it's obvious. It's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was never not connected with this place. Yeah. That makes complete sense. It, it made... Anyway. Yeah. So I, I just... Don't try to make it something it's not. No, yeah. I thought it was really strange that they did that also. I, I also don't like the... Um, this is a cinematography thing, but I don't like that they shot this in two different ways. They had the... I love the observer effect, right? The thing where you have a lot of a, where you show it voyeuristically. You know, there's a shot that's um, as Jin comes into the thing. She, there's a shot that is behind a lot of people's heads, yeah. And she sees the uh, the speaker, the like, the MC, and um, I love that idea of showing from her perspective. You know, you're claustrophobic and you don't know what's really going on. And then when when, when Jay comes out, suddenly we're close up. And suddenly it's a wide shot and we just have everything very exposed from the cinematography point of view. That means it's much more intimate and we already know who this character is. It's just weird to have jumped that line mm -hmm. visually. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah. yeah. And, and it has that effect of like, Oh, it's her. Right. We know all this about her. And so it, it uh, you know, all the pieces come fall oh. together and your mind is blown. Right. <laughs> But again, that didn't happen. That's not what happens. So. I don't think it's what happens. I was certainly surprised at the moment. When I think I, that's what they wanted to happen. When, when I first saw it, it was a bit of a, bit of a reveal. I, it, I won't say that it wasn't mm. a reveal, but it, it it was a little bit. Okay. You know, but when, when I started, when I kept watching it, she started speaking. It more made sense than I was like, oh, right, right, right. So it was like I just caught up with yeah. everything. But, um, we were talking a minute ago about how they've just they've just made this cult a, a bunch of bad guys, right? Crazy right. people, right? Right? Crazy right. people. There's yeah. crazy people, bad guys. Yeah, who are um, all, by the way, very fit. Of course, <laughs> they have very cool haircuts. I just know that they're they're all dressed really nicely. Yeah, they're, there's no Matrix people, like we said. There's no techno music. They they're just security, <laughs> and they're <laughs> they're all very fit, very uh, what Silicon Valley. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just weird to see. Like, I, I would think they're all business owners, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, when she comes in, I swear they they almost played music that's. It reminded me of like the Lannisters theme. <laughs> like it was like boom, no, 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 no. Like really, I don't remember that. Like. Darth Vader. Here comes Darth, <laughs> Darth Vader, Vader, you know? And it would be nice if she was like okay, here, here's something I guess. If if they were one hundred percent bad guys, like they're making them out to be, and then when Jay comes out and you're just like, Oh damn, she's the baddest of the bad people, that'd be interesting. Yeah. But she's not because it's not that bad of a place. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> The, this little sequence from what's happening on the ship with Evans and Little Red Riding Hood, I love this dynamic. This is some of the more dynamic character moments we have because Winjay does not know that that has happened. Right. That's really interesting. She's yeah. unaware that that's it. So she's still living under the assumption that they are under protection of by the Santi. Right. Meaning when the wall gets knocked down and people with guns walk in, oh, this is supposed to be happening. Okay, wait, I don't like this now <laughs> because you revealed something a little bit to me just now. What's that? Okay. Um, wait, say, say what you said again. You said that, oh, because, okay, okay. Ugh. I don't like this. Uh-huh. When, 
So you said, what's his name? Just, just you know, we just had a scene where what's he his just name severed is. the ties with yeah. with the uh, with the Lord. I never saw that as they are now not under their protection anymore. I never oh. saw it that way. Yeah, that's what happened. That is what happened. But it's much more interesting to me to think of this as a cult experience where she says, you know, if the Lord wants this to happen, it will happen, right? The idea was in my mind was that the Santi don't fucking care about this whole thing. And they 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 wouldn't mind if any of them died, it's whatever. And I felt like that's just how the Santi always felt. And thus would never interfere with something like this because it's so low level. They just don't care about it. I don't think so. No. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. Because that really, that's the way it should be. I feel like that's much more interesting (laughs) to me because the whole you are bugs thing that we'll get to later means so much more. If human thought is so in on this idea of we are so important and it turns out we're not, that's really interesting to me. And that whole idea, again, about the cult being that we have the strong faith. It even goes back, it ties back into the idea uh, that they were saying in the book where the very first scene where the revolutionary is waving her flag, feeling like like she's invincible, and then she gets shot uh, only to be, like, picked away at by by, uh, shooters later on as target practice. It's such an interesting thing to say that you can be so high on your own faith that you just don't understand what reality is anymore. Yeah, but that's not it. It's not faith. But it's not. That's what's fascinating about them as a cult with a Lord that's real. Right, right. Right? But th- but that's what I mean, though. The Lord's real and still doesn't give a shit. That's, well, that except would have been their, interesting. their Lord does. I mean, she had even the Lord had said, right. you don't need to be afraid. I'm not going to let anything happen to you See, guys. I, I'm far less interested now. Yeah. because that's interesting it's interesting to me that well it's both interesting the interesting that the aliens could protect us at any moment also couldn't if if they decide not to that's interesting but it's much more interesting to me that the aliens say that they're going to protect us just put us at ease and then don't don't care no i think they had a genuine that's uh, dumb a a genuine give and take relationship with with these people i don't like that so they're invested (laughs) in them I, i think they had a real thing going that i don't like that and then little red riding hood ruined it well yeah i like that that ruined it yeah but uh, yeah but here's the inconsistency yeah, and yeah, i'm sure. wondering where this is leading because uh so so when jay uh still believes that the santi are on their side and so when the wall gets knocked down and these soldiers come in it's like hey, hey everyone stay chill if this is what's supposed to happen, it's what's supposed to happen. If it wasn't, the Lord would have stopped them. Right. All right. Because she actually knows that they would have. Right. Okay. Which I didn't get at all, but that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't like. I don't like this. <laughs> so they go along with it. But here's the weird inconsistency is uh, Tatiana takes it on herself right. to stand up and start shooting people. Yeah. Right. So what does she know? Does she know things that Win Jay doesn't? And and is she even like above them? So the original, my original vision of this, because this whole part in my mind, still, they were still connected or whatever. I don't fucking care. But Tatiana was acting out of spite, I feel like. Like she, she saw that, uh, that Jin was talking to Win Jay and she got jealous, right? There was that whole half clap that she was doing. You know, when she saw Wen Jay come out and put her hands on Jin and say, thank you for coming. And Tatiana's like, what the fuck? Like, that should be me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then and then to see, she can tell right away that she was the narc, the plant. Right. Later on. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So when they're they're protecting her, they said, let's go. Then she's like, oh, well, she, there's something wrong. So I feel like she's been, Tatiana has been building up this hatred and now she's got the idea that, oh, yeah, I need to kill her or whatever. Or she, she also brought a handgun to the summit. <laughs> right. So that, that Which I don't also, understand how that happened. Right? Like, are they all back in heat? <laughs> this peaceful cult? They just, they just all pull out weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into that Matrix shootout. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't get... Uh, there's this big show to, to, to show that she survived at the end, showing right. her and escaped. Yeah, like, that's apparently weird. that's yeah. important to show. Apparently. There's some weird reveal later where she's limping around and they're like, she's still around. And just probably because she was so unnerving 
I guess. Yeah. And, people, and they don't want to lose that character. I honestly think that's what that is. <laughs> See, but they're dropping all these hints like she's like su- super empowered. Like she has some special connection to the, to the Santi. Santi yeah. that's even like beyond uh, uh, Evans. It definitely them, feels that way, you know? right? As if she's a human form of the Santi or something. Something like that. Or, yeah. or like she swa- she's a swallowed a sofon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know if there's a reveal later on that she is somehow just like one of the santi that would be interesting uh-huh but i don't think it's going to be that yeah and so it's just sloppy yeah it's just more <laughs> more sloppy seconds <laughs> oof they don't know what they're doing <laughs> they don't know what they're doing all right yeah so so tatiana escapes and she's crawling away clarence uh talks to Jin. In an ambulance, says, you're lucky I'm a crappy shooter. Oh, yeah. Did he mean anything by that, by the way? No, I think no. it's just to... It was just a throwaway line. Just to be just like, to be hey, <laughs> sorry, you almost got killed. It, sorry, you almost died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> when he said he was a lousy shot, I thought it was interesting because if you read into it, maybe, you notice that she, he took out both of Tatiana's legs, right, with two shots. Yeah. Perfect aim. And he says, I'm a lousy shot later on. He was aiming for her head. (laughs) (laughs) He was going for the head shot. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He doesn't know what he's doing. (laughs) He doesn't know what he's doing, man. Uh, Will is on the phone. Right. I like this scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like it because it's, again, character. Yeah. The juxtaposition of her having been through what she was just through. Right. And him kind of coming out of... uh, the scarier parts of uh, cancer and kind of like acceptance now. Yeah. You know? So, okay. There's a little bit of a conversation to be had about Will, I think between you and me, because I know that you, you liked Will in this show, right? Yeah. And I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like he was a complete waste, almost a complete waste. There's obviously one thing that he, he's there for Yeah. in the plot, yeah. but, but everything up until then, I feel like, Looking back on it from that episode that we're going to get to later on. Right. <laughs> it seems like his whole story was just a setup for that. That's true. I think I think he is. Yeah. I think he is. Um, uh, <clears throat> the, like, romance that never was between him and Jin is feels, kind of fluff it, as well. Yeah, it feels forced to me, honestly. <clears throat> it feels like... I never felt like Jin obviously because she already has a boyfriend but it it never it never feels like she genuinely cared for will in the wake of all these other things happening which makes sense who the fuck cares yeah when the human race has aliens to worry about right i think um there again maybe some missed opportunities here with yeah. will there's a whole what there's i whole like episodes they could do what i liked about will was the perspective of having someone who has whose time on earth is already over right when this happens oh sure you know yeah i actually i did see that a lot when the first time that i saw this scene the first thing that was in my head was well there's all this shit going on right now and you're talking about going to a beach yeah you know or whatever and like they yeah it's kind of a cool uh a cool way to bring to to bring humanity back in yeah to the story it makes sense yeah 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 po- post post i feel like analysis it makes sense mm-hmm. but seeing his interest in jen is a little cringy when it's this far removed from what's happening around her and stuff uh and i think that's probably i don't know I, i'm making a headcanon right now but i feel yeah. like that's why she tells him everything right that's been going on she uses this moment right now to say okay let me tell you everything right i don't um I don't like his uh, 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 ongoing dialogue about, oh, should I tell her I love her? Should I tell her I love her? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. It's because I don't care, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I cared, though. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a love story in Game of Thrones that was so interesting to see on screen play out. But they were all pretty interesting. I can't think of one that was... Like, I hope they're together. Oh, freaking uh, the two big ones at the very end. That was really interesting to me because of the implications of their love. Yeah. Right? Like, like, they're, they're, like it says so much more. Yeah. 
but in here it's just it made things really dicey like when when they started falling in love with each other you know, I, like game it, of thrones yeah yeah, yeah. the stakes it made things right. really uncomfortable and kind of scary and again you stay in that situation where you're like who right whose allegiance with who yeah so and that's it, cool it changes the story <clears throat> right yeah it, it would be really interesting i think if will was say i don't know in love with tatiana like mm-hmm. will does not have a character arc whatsoever will ha- will's a, the flattest he's actually one note the yeah. whole the whole show he is so flat yeah. jen at least goes back a little bit because she does because she does have feelings for will right and uh, i mean it's obvious from the very beginning uh same with saul saul has strange uh you know things for augie but also is very attached to vera you know there's this whole idea it's, it's not always love but it's a thing that's there and yeah it, and it pulls his judgment one way or the other he doesn't really have an arc either though no 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 i'm pulling here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah no one here really has that much fun. you know who has an arc uh wong from the book from the book yeah <laughs> if we put them all together there might be an arc there <laughs> yeah Jin kind of has an arc Jin is the is the arkiest of them all. Actually, fucking Augie, Augie has an arc. It's just stupid. What's Augie's arc? Her 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 arc is uh, um, kind of over already. It's already happened. But her <laughs> oh, the, it was the, with the countdown and the right, technology. The uh, yeah, that was her arc. Oof. Yeah, and now now she does. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. There's a moment in here. I feel like uh, that. Augie could have died. I can't remember if we already talked about that or not, but she should have yeah. when it could have been her. I think I think it was instead of Jack. That's what it was. You good? Yep, just checking. Uh, yeah, instead of Jack dying, should have been Augie because her arc was over. Should have been Augie. <laughs> Jack didn't have an arc either. <laughs> no. <laughs> None of these characters have arcs. They're just kind of useful at certain moments. <laughs> this is why I keep thinking it's like friends. Because the idea of a show that just keeps going forever means no one yeah. has a fully realized arc. It's always an arc that comes up and then dips and ebbs and flows. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like they're uh, video game characters uh, where we're meant to sort of move through the space that they're in. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Right? And learning this story. Because they're characters probably that are meant to carry the, the exposition, and that's it. Kind of like uh, Rebel, Rebel Moon shit <laughs> this is not as bad as Rebel Moon <laughs> this episode was recently interrupted by someone walking through and we and we told that person that we like this show <laughs> <laughs> I said I said in love and hate yeah yeah I'm just and I'm just pointing out that our episodes are definitely <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> definitely leaning more into the hate here. we always we always uh, we talked about this when we started the show because we were so interested we were interested interested in Dan and Dave, honestly. Yeah, that was the thing that came out. We're just like, oh man, Dan and Dave have made this amazing thing and adaptation, and which yeah. that's what that's their bread and butter, right. baby. And we and we watched it, um, and we both liked it, mm-hmm. right? And it it was like there was obviously holes in there, there were gaps that we didn't like, but that's the thing that I think stands out more than anything else, because the IP itself is already badass, but how they're communicating it is not that good. Yeah not that interesting yeah that's the interesting thing about the show exactly is how uninteresting it is well kind of yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least to us it is <laughs> uh okay um we have a flashback sequence uh this might be one of the better moments of development for when jay and evans where they, they're on the judgment day for the first time. Oh, yeah. Setting it up. The 80s part. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. And they go and see the control room, and he reveals that, oh, no, they've been sending messages ever since. Right. And we have all this info. And There's they, a plot here. And they think you're really important. Right. And then they kiss. And then they kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and then they kiss. And then they fuck. <laughs> um, that's in the, the Snyder cut. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, the Snyder cut. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing's in slow motion until black and white and four by three. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I was going to say in the book, but no. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. If, if we, if the directors wanted us to have the kind of attachment 
yeah. or um, empathy. Any kind of empathy with f- Evans? With Evans and to a, n- a lesser degree, Win Jay Win. Win Ye Win Jay. Yeah. Um, we would have needed a lot more scenes like this one. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And there was one previously with the diner that I think was mostly just a setup. Yeah. That one didn't do much. Yeah. The first time they meet, meet in, in China. Right. Is uh, a decent. It's decent. Yeah. And I think it's so... in. I'm going to bring up the book again. God damn it. Bring up the book. I hate doing it. Go this. on. I hate doing it. But it's it's so cool seeing... What's his name? Evans be this environmentalist and go to the extreme where he thinks humans suck so badly because they're killing off this species killing off this species they turn up their environment they're bad for the planet it makes sense and then then he goes to when jane when jay's like fucking aliens dude they're coming over he's like fuck yeah dude yeah (laughs) and he's on board right that makes a whole lot of sense right I don't know that it does. It doesn't make sense because the show doesn't do that. Right. Because they don't show his interest. Yeah, I wanted, I definitely wanted to see the, uh, some sort of bridging material. Right. From being the hippie radical to being the uh, cult leader. Right. So into the Santi coming. Right. That it transforms all of his intentions. All of them. And He's the, not talking about saving the birds anymore. Exactly. And that's, what the, that's the divide that I have between young and old Evans. Yeah. Because old Evans is 100% diehard cult person. And this other guy was just a friendly environmentalist who was, who was into Win Jay. And then, yeah. And then, but the, the fact that he built Judgment Day... The idea that he put together all this stuff, that's really interesting. But how the fuck did he get there? Why did he get there? That's what well, I Well, and know. based on by what we saw on screen, the why was to impress a, a girl. That's what it looked like. God damn it. That's man. all it that's looks stupid. like. Stupid. <laughs> that's that's what He's like, Look what I built you. Right. Kiss me. Right. <laughs> no, and, and this is this is absolutely the folly of the show because the show because it condenses everything and chops a bunch of stuff out. Yeah. What we have left is the only thread of connection and that's and that's love, right? Yeah. It's just the it's just the relationships <clears throat> between people. There's there there was one thing that my film teacher said, uh I can't remember where he got it, but it was the idea that audiences only care about two things. That's love and survival, right? And yeah, I guess if you're being super reductionist about it at the point of all life on earth, then yeah, sure. Maybe everyone only cares about love or survival, but because that's the only, because that's the baseline, right? When you, when you take out everything and all you're left with is a relationship, now that's the motivation for everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And the show says that, uh, yeah, Evans did all this shit, committed himself completely to the fucking cult because he loves one J and I just don't believe it. No. Um, Based on what they've showed me, I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah. He should have had some kind of transformative experience that we can that we could with. see and right. go like, oh, you know, oh, they are definitely coming. Yeah. They either will destroy us or save us, and so I better be on this team. Exactly. What else? Exactly. Yeah. Even if it's even if it's dumb, you know, even if it's like a motivation that audiences won't agree with. I'm fine with that as long as the motivation is there mm-hmm. and explained and yeah. it's not. So, yeah. 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 This show is filled with uh, unmotivated and um, yeah, un- unmotivated uh, actions. Yeah. And weakly motivated. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and scenes that don't move the story along. <laughs> and skip scene. Skip scenes. Yeah. <laughs> so sad what are they doing what are they doing oh, no. <laughs> feel feel a little down in this episode <laughs> this we, is my favorite episode too. i know it's my favorite episode yeah, of yeah. the show yeah <laughs> what, is, what does that mean <laughs> what does that mean? what does it mean oh no <laughs> huh all right i guess i hate to use this word but the show's starting to feel a little joyless Oh, geez, no. That was the word we used for Rebel Moon. Yeah, no, no. Rebel Moon has many more issues than this does. Oh, yeah. 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 Actually, actually, it's the same issues, just much more pervasive. Yeah, exacerbated like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah the, the at least the at least the showrunners know how to put together an arc because i can see there are some spaces where the characters are learning things but they're not fully realized but they're there Rebel, yeah Rebel moon doesn't even yeah. do that yeah <laughs> so. um hmm this is probably too early to bring this up because we still have four more episodes. It's our cover. show, man. It's our show. It's the halfway. <laughs> this is this is the halftime show, <laughs> right? So, uh, given what we know, having seen the whole series, right? Um, I feel like we're still in a place where <laughs> a strong season two basically makes all of this forgivable i can see that yeah and i think it's going to happen and the reason why i think it is is because like a lot of people say the first book was more of a prologue and from what uh from what i hear dan and dave say they say that their what was it the red wedding moment from what you told me yeah Yeah, is in in second season season. yeah so i think there's going to be a lot more interesting content in this their season two that's going to make all of this like, oh, that was just a setup. Yeah, you got to yeah. get through season one. <laughs> right, right. Then it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out hope. I hope right. so. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Okay. So if they um, get season two greenlit, we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, we we pull back on the really hot kiss of Evans and and Super hot. Jay. They're they're into it. Super hot. I got aroused. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, we cut to present day. Wade is bringing old Winjay into interrogation. Oh, yeah. yep. And uh, she gives a really cool speech. I thought it was a great ending to the episode. Yeah. Because I thought the episode was ending on that kiss. And I was like, ah, oh, that is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then there's one more scene. Yeah. And um, basically she tells him, she's like, you guys don't know what you're getting into you don't understand how powerful they are. Right. They're coming and uh, there's nothing you can do to stop them and you will be grateful. I yeah. love that. I, like, do I too. thought that was an awesome ending. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I, I like uh, I like the implications of it quite a lot. Yeah. Um, Remember, was, she still doesn't know. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going without that because I don't fucking care about that. That. It's so much more interesting to me to to get the humanity out of it. Uh huh. Yeah, but it, it makes sense that she's being duped. That makes sense, but whatever. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say when Jay's actress, she is so good. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like we're talking about Claire, uh, Benedict Wong, who's amazing. But yeah, what's her name is great. There's a few performances in this that really outshine other people on the screen. Yeah. And actually, I think uh, what's it, Liam Cunningham? Who is that? Uh, he he's um, the Onion Knight. Oh right, <laughs> Sir no, I don't, Davos Seaworth. Yeah, I don't like him. No, I know. Yeah. Um, I I think he's getting done dirty. Oh yeah, because he's not that bad. He's, right, right, right. He's, we've seen him do some really good stuff. Yeah, but he's next to Benedict Wong <laughs> right. and this other actress the whole time. Uh, her name's Rosalind Chow. Okay. Yeah. And they make him uninteresting. They absolutely do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he's playing like a character character, you know, like someone who's kind of a comic bookish kind of one yeah. note person, yeah. it makes sense to me. He's kind of the mustache trailing kind of guy. Yeah. It's cool to see that kind of person in the good guy seat, more or less, um, pushing everything through. I like the overseer personality here, but I just, I don't believe him because he's in this grounded area where Jen is, right? And she's all, he's always talking to Jen and Clarence and yeah. uh, who, Winjay, but they're all grounded people. And yeah. he's like this cartoon villain, or not villain, but good guy. But. I want him to either be more of an asshole right. <laughs> or more like super clever. Yeah. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. yeah. Would make sense to me. Yeah. So anyway, that's how the episode ends. Yep. Um, that was our favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's obvious. So isn't it obvious? <laughs> what an episode, guys! Wow, wow, good stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, great episode. Great episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so that's the halfway point of yeah. uh, Three Body Problem season one. Yeah, eight episodes, so four four more to go. Four more to go, and yeah. 
damn, it seems a crazy, um, huge amount happens in four episodes, in, in the four upcoming episodes. Yeah. And almost nothing happened in the first four. <laughs> yeah. Like really little happened yeah. in the first four episodes. All right. All right, goodbye. We'll see you guys later. This is our uh, pizza rating. Pizza rating time. Pizza rating time. Or pizza slice rating time. Our, our pizza rating addendum to yes. the episode. Where we compare the slice or <laughs> the slice of the show. To the slice of the pizza. To the slice of the pizza. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, D. Yeah. If you could compare episode four of Three Body Problem mm -hmm. to a slice of pizza, what would be on your plate? Okay. So, when you go to the, uh, when you go to Whole Foods... And you got the heat lamp pizza there, uh -huh. right? Whole Foods sometimes does a pretty good job, right? You have some some pizzas there that look pretty good if they're fresh. Uh, but every now and then you got a bald spot, mm -hmm. right? And this is the one slice that no one touched yeah. over the last three hours that it's yeah. been sitting out. Yeah. So it's been sitting there. It's really dry. It's the only one that's left. And you're really hungry, so you're going to eat this. Uh, but it's the bald spot one. It's the one that has uh, one mushroom on it. Yeah. Uh, the cheese is all to one side. It's pretty bad. Um, and then when you get it uh, and you put it into your thing and you go to check out, you find out that because of inflation, this is actually $12 for this slice of pizza. Um, and then so you you go ahead and pay for it. It's a little smaller than the box. You don't even get, you know. It doesn't even the, fit the box. Yeah, it's, a, it's not even the a full fuck. pizza slice. You go down to sit uh, and eat and it's like stale and burnt at the same time. Ugh. Um, you try to get to that one mushroom and it's slimy. Well, wh how did it stay slimy under the heat lamp that long? Yeah, I don't know. They added it at the end. They must have. They saw a customer coming, and they're like, I got to spruce this up, and no <laughs> one's going to buy it. And then there's some sauce that's left over from the underneath that was from a different pizza. Oh. Right? Uh, it's like, it has like, so, Just, like a tikka masala sauce or something. Weird. Yeah, it was really strange. It didn't, yeah. didn't work at all. Let's see. Um, that's a kick in the nuts. Yeah, but there mm. was a little hint of basil in there, mm. and it smelled really good when you, when you took that bite. Okay. So that part was pretty good, but huh. everything else was terrible. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. You agree with that slice? <laughs> yeah. That's like a fuck my life slice of pizza. <laughs> like, you're depressed after that. You're uh, you're, you're definitely not uh, liking no. that slice of pizza. No. At all. Well, okay. You inspired me. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I had another idea, but now I got a better idea. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to that same Whole Foods. Oh, or that wasn't the same one. All right. Oh, yep. Yep. All right. Now uh, I'll state I'm a vegan, and uh, vegan pizza. <laughs> most people scoff at the very idea, um, but actually Whole Foods does a pretty good job with vegan pizza. Yeah. Because you know they make their crust, they got a brick oven, uh, and they have great toppings. You know, and um, this is when you're a vegan and you're hungry. And you're like, I'm going to swing by Whole Foods to grab me a slice of vegan pizza. And you get there, and it's all gone. It's gone. It's just not there. Oh, no. This is a slice of pizza that isn't there. <laughs> it's not there at all. It's not even there. <laughs> it's, it's the experience of missing the it's slice the of pizza. It's the experience of wishing there was pizza <laughs> when there is none. I'd say that's a bit harsh. I don't care. This, this is show a, is... No, the, your favorite scene was in this episode okay uh, that's true okay 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 it's funny because i remember in the episode saying this is my favorite episode <laughs> right. because it had my favorite scene yeah right the episode um, itself is but then right in now. our like coverage we shit all over this episode we're like <laughs> why why did i say this is my this is a really bad episode yeah but that scene where uh with the the my lord scene it's free is freaking good it's great it's yeah. freaking good yeah that's that basil okay so i'll say it's the pizza that wasn't there, and then you just go get a really good beer <laughs> to drown your, your woes. <laughs> this, this slice of pizza is a really good beer. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually sounds like I'm giving it too much credit, but it's, that's within the context of it's supposed to be pizza. Right. You're hungry. Yeah. And you grab beer instead. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. Nice. Cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs>